everyone, Joanne from Art Resin here, and today I am joined by artist Christine Fitzgerald. And Christine, I'm so happy to have you in the studio with Thank us. Thank you so much for having me. And you've brought in two gorgeous pieces of art here, so what are we going to be working on today? Thank you. I'm going to be using resin two different ways. For this piece, I'm going to use it as a top coat. And then for this piece, we're going to be using the resin as a medium with acrylic paint and doing a Dutch pour that way. Amazing. Well, these are beautiful. I can't wait to learn how to do them. Thank so you. Let's get started. Okay, Christine, so what are we going to start with first? Um, today I'm going to show you one of my most popular fluid flowers, the sunflower. We're going to do a Dutch pour sunflower. And I have all of my colors lined up here. That way I don't get confused mm -hmm. and I know which one goes in which place. Um, and as you can see, I love to use metallics throughout all of my pieces. And I find if I alternate between the flat colors and the metallic colors, that'll give me a lot of the really yummy cells that we're looking for. Yes, yeah, your cell work is absolutely gorgeous. Thank and you. I love this color palette too. Thank you, yeah, it's so bright and, and especially happy. on a day like today. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, so what's the first step? So the first step is to pour the base coat mm -hmm. and then we'll pour the colors and we'll blow it out. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. So we're gonna start with the black center and I like to use my stick just so that I can make sure I get a proper, nice floral center. Mm -hmm. And then that way I can just go ahead and fill it in with the cup right after that. I actually like the thicker wood panels for pieces like this because it just gives it a little bit more depth to the piece mm -hmm. and I think it just looks a little bit nicer. And then when you're coating it with resin too, it's got the strength as well yes. to support the weight of that resin. Definitely yeah. sturdy. You don't have to worry about sagging or pooling or anything like that. So I just make sure that it goes down the side and you want to make sure that you have enough paint in the center and on the canvas or panel to begin with, just so you have a good pillow for the paint to move across. Mm -hmm. This right? is acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. So for this black, I used the Artist Loft soft body acrylic. Mm -hmm. And I actually added some Pebeo iridescent gold to the mix, just so that it's not uh, a solid flat center. Um, it has a little bit of sparkle. And of course the gold matches with the sunflower as well. Yes. So. And now I will do the white base. So this I will try to meet up as close to the black as possible with leaving a little bit of space so that I can put my yellow down without it mixing too much um, and creating kind of a muddy color. So you always want to make sure you have a pretty generous amount. Mm -hmm. It's always better to have more than less because trying to mix it up mid-painting is uh, <laughs> never a good idea. Right, and we've also propped up the panel um, just on some little plastic cups so it's not sitting directly on our tabletop right. here. Yeah, so with this technique, um, with letting it run over the edge, if you let it sit right on the table, you could risk it sticking to the mm -hmm. table, and that's just, a, that's just a mess that's not very necessary. Exactly. So. so what did you mix the acrylic paint with to make it so fluid? Yeah, so with my, my specific technique, I use a glue and water pouring medium. Mm -hmm. Um, I start with glue and then I add my paint and then I add the water to make it the right consistency. Um, some paints, depending on the brand or even certain colors within the same brand, have a different consistency. So they'll all kind of require a different amount of water uh, to get to the right consistency for the Dutch pour, which is pretty fluid because you want to be able to blow, blow it out with your hair dryer. So is your goal to have all of your tints like the same um, fluidity? You want to try to get them as close to the same consistency as possible. That way they're all moving the same way as well. Mm. Uh, because if one is a little bit thicker, it's going to move a little bit slower than the rest of them. And that will kind of, it could work in your favor, but it will create different designs in your painting, what you're going for. And with the fluid flower, you kind of want them all to be moving together versus against one another. Um, to have more of a uniform petal type shape. Right. There's definitely different variables that can affect your painting mm -hmm. and, and how your, your outcome will be. And there's different techniques that require different materials so that you can, you know, get the acquired effect. So that's great. You mix your own pouring medium. So you can buy pouring mediums that are already Yes, blended, there but. are definitely, there are a ton of different pouring mediums out there, mm -hmm. but you can also just use water. 
with your paints, and you or you could go the route that I did, and you could use uh, glue. And then basically, what the glue is doing is it's acting as a binder, so that when you add the water, it's not breaking down the pigment in the paint too much, um, which then would cause you know the the opacity of the paint wouldn't be there, right. the vibrancy of the colors wouldn't be there. Yes, that's a good point. Okay, so now I'm just gonna give it a quick torch and get rid of any air bubbles that might be hiding underneath the colors. And then we can start with the colors. Amazing. Okay, and now we're going to start with the colors. So we're starting with the copper. This is the Artist Loft Copper, mm -hmm. and it's a nice orangey copper. Um, that's why I liked using it with the yellows, uh, but it's also very sparkly, mm -hmm. very metallic. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to try to get as close to the black with the copper, maybe a little bit over. And that way, that will also give us cells if they're kind of laying on top of each other. And I leave a little gap between the black and the white so that the colors actually have a chance to be their true colors without mixing in the black or the white, mm -hmm. which will obviously give you either darker or lighter version of the color. So now we're going in with the deep yellow from Liquitex Basics. So you're going for traditional um, sunflower with the yellows, but you also do like pinks and blues and... Yeah, some yeah. of my favorite uh, ones that I've created haven't necessarily been flowers you'd find in nature, mm -hmm. um, but that's the whole fun of fluid art is you get to take your imagination, you get to take what you're hoping you could see in nature and make it yourself. So now I'm going in with a primary yellow. The mm -hmm. yellow I just used is actually one of my favorite yellows. And I love that you're using not one, not two, you're using three yellows plus the two golds. Like it's gonna give it so much um, depth and dimension. Yeah, well yeah. in real life, when you look at a real sunflower, there's so many different shades involved. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna see just one shade of mm -hmm. yellow. And I really wanted to capture the actual sunflower because I feel like it's very a very symbolic flower of happiness and it means a lot to a lot of different people. So I figured if I could get it as close to nature and realistic as possible, then that's what I'm going for. So with the gold, I usually just kind of add it as an accent mm -hmm. um, so that it doesn't overpower too much because gold likes to take over. And so now I'll just kind of oh. accentuate the petal shapes that I'm looking for. Oh, I love that. And then that way when I blow it out, these kind of lines will almost look like the veins in a flower petal mm -hmm. that you would normally see. And I just kind of lay it on. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's another good thing about fluid art is you don't have to overthink what you're doing. It usually just, sometimes it's not what you had hoped for, but it's always beautiful. And so I'm, again, I'm going in with the copper and I'll do this with most of the colors just to kind of give it a little bit more depth to the flower. So if you see here, I have kind of a little blank divot here. Mm -hmm. If I were not to fill that in with more white paint and I tried to blow it out, it would act like a little dry wall and it wouldn't let the paint past it. So you would kind of end up with a little break in your flow mm -hmm. almost. So you want to make sure that all of these little divots are filled in. And again, you're going to be blowing over it all so it doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want to have any dry spots because like I said, it will stop up your flow very quickly. Right, that makes sense. Yeah and I just use an excessive amount of paint. <laughs> that way I can make sure that my colors will reach the edge of the canvas. And then after you're done pouring the paint that's dripped over the edge, do you leave it or do you like sand the sides down? Or? I usually leave the sides. I think that it looks pretty with the petals kind of flowing yes, over the sides. I do too. Okay, so now that we've got all of our white down and all of our dry spots covered, mm -hmm. we're going to torch a little bit mm -hmm. and get rid of the air bubbles. And now we start with the blow dryer. 
Okay, let me get the hair dryer for you. Awesome, now it's time to get started. Yeah. Uh, with this, with the flower specifically, there are kind of a few tips I would have. Sometimes you'd like to hold the hair dryer upside down so you can get the right angle. You wanna make sure you keep it on an angle and not straight down. Mm -hmm. And you also wanna try as much as you can to try to do it in one swipe or one pass. That way you're not kind of messing with the flow as much because we are going for petals. You don't want it to look kind of wiggly, if that makes sense. Got it. <laughs> and you find uh, the hair dryer has a little more sort of force than like a heat gun would. Yes, yeah. definitely. A heat gun um, is a little bit more concentrated and this with the hair dryer, you get more power and with the attachment, you get a little bit more of the petal shape that we're looking for. So definitely hair dryer. Great. Once we start, we start. So I'm gonna hold it upside down, actually. Oh, that. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. It's a lot faster than uh, people think, too, right? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. This hair dryer is awesome. with my mouth to kind of touch up the center part. Um, and if I need to go over any places, like here kind of looks a little, like I could do just one more pass mm -hmm. here, tidy it up a bit, and then that's it, she's done. It is fantastic. Look at all the cells, they're <laughs> amazing. Okay, I'm so just good. gonna fix this spot because that's bugging me. <laughs> Wow, look at the cells, it is amazing. So gorgeous. I find the amps, or sorry, the Artist Loft Copper mm -hmm. really gives off good cells like that. Wow. Yeah, you use lots of different brands of paint, so do you find that um, mixing up the brands kind of gives you a different effect? Definitely. So when you're mixing different brands, I find you'll get more cells that mm -hmm. way. When you stick with the same brand, they technically have the same makeup for the paint, right? So they're all gonna act the same way, mm -hmm. they're all gonna perform the same way. When you start mixing different brands together, they're kind of shocked as to what exactly they're, they're touching or meeting up with. And this is where you get the reaction of the cells. Right, yeah. And do you have much time, like much wiggle room as far as like working time? Like does yeah, your paint set up? Definitely, so with paint you have quite a bit of working time, mm -hmm. especially with a Dutch pour where you are using the amount of paint you're using. So it's gonna take a while to dry. Uh, this piece would probably take two to three days to dry fully. Um, and then about a month fully to dry to cure before you can do the resin top coat. I see, all yeah. right, yeah. So now I'm just gonna kind of jump into the center here and fix up these big orange spots. Mm -hmm. Kind of add some little floral ticks to it and then it'll be done and ready to go. So you're blowing on it, you, th you find the hair dryer is just a bit too intense. Yeah, when you're mm -hmm. trying to get in the little detailed parts, the hair dryer is just a little bit too powerful and not as precise as you can get with your mouth. Okay, got it. So right here where you see there's kind of like a, a bit of a harsh line, it's not really following the flow of the flower. I'm just going to blow the black out onto that copper. Mm -hmm. uh, we should see some cells form pretty quickly as well.
so cool. I love it. And you can see as the black is starting to kind of dry a little bit, you can see that gold that you added in. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I added the, uh, the Pebeo iridescent gold mm -hmm. to the black just to kind of give it a little bit more dimension, a little bit more than just a black center. Yeah, it really does. I was just gonna say we're gonna torch it one more time to get rid of the air bubbles mm -hmm. and then we just let it dry. Great. Any places too that look like there's a lot of white, if you hit it with the torch, it will actually bring the colors up to the surface. Oh yeah. It's interesting how paint works. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what what does it, but I'll work with like it. Like you said, it's all chemistry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So how long do you have um, to come and do a few little touch-ups if you decide you want to, you know, yeah. make keep, a few tweaks? Keep tweaking it. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. About an hour to an hour and a half. It depends on how much paint you have on the canvas. Mm -hmm. Something of this size, I'd say I have about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours to come in and kind of play with the composition of it if I needed to blow out any other little areas that I wasn't happy with, stuff like that. It looks amazing. The cell work is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so impressed. Actually, I just wanted to show you one quick thing with the flash on my phone because sometimes it's hard to get the full effect of the colors wow. and how they're really playing off of each other. Those metallics are just shining. It looks fantastic. Thank Look, you. you can really see the gold in the black. Yes. So gorgeous. Yeah, with the light you can really see the metallics and mm -hmm. the color shift and how they're working and playing against each other. And then when we put the resin on top, it's really, really going to amplify that sparkle oh, yes. as well. Oh yes, it's going to bring it all out. Everything that you can't see now while it's even wet or when it's dry and kind of matte, the resin is going to bring it just right back to life. Amazing. So speaking of resin, because this is going to take a few days to dry, yes. you brought in another piece that's similar to this, right? I did. I brought in another sunflower piece uh, so we can do the resin top coat on that and then that way you can see the product from beginning to end. Okay, perfect. So let's put this one aside. We'll get the other painting and then we can start resining. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so we are ready to resin here. So you made this painting previously, right? Yes, I did this painting uh, about three and a half weeks ago. Um, it is dry to the touch in about two to three days, like I said, but you want to make sure that it's fully cured before you add the resin or else it will lock any moisture that is still in lingering. It will lock it in to the canvas or the panel that you're working with. Yeah, and that is so important because resin and moisture do not mix. They do so not, they yeah, do not you like each other. Sure it's fully dry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and this is, is totally similar to the one that we just did, right? Yeah, so I used exactly all of the same colors to kind of get it as close to the replicas as we could get it mm -hmm. so that there's no surprises. Yeah, yeah, you nailed it. They look so similar. Thank you. All right, so shall we uh, measure and mix our resin? All right, we'll get going. So we've got our um, panel is up on some stands. So I'm going to measure out my resin. Mm -hmm. um, your fabulous website actually has a really great calculator. I use it every time. Uh, that way I can make sure I'm using the proper amount for the size of the painting that I'm doing. Perfect. So this one is a 16 by 20 panel and the resin calculator uh, indicates 11 ounces total. Yeah. Right? So five and a half ounces of resin, five and a half ounces of hardener. So art resin is a one to one ratio, equal amounts of resin and hardener. And it doesn't matter if you start with the resin first or the hardener, as long as they are equal amounts by volume. And now we mix. And I believe it's three minute. You got three it. minute mixing time. And you want, want to make sure that it's fully mixed. Scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. Make sure it's all incorporated together so you don't have any fogginess. Yeah, or you might end up with like sticky spots as right. well, right? Yeah. And then any bubbles that are left in the resin, it's not to worry about because you can always hit it with a torch or a heat, uh, heat gun afterwards to just pop all those bubbles. Exactly. All right, now that it's all mixed up, we can get ready and add the top coat. Excellent. So we just uh, taped off the sides. What we're gonna do is dome this piece. So we're gonna place the, the resin just on the top without going over the sides. Yeah. So we just put some tape along just for a little extra insurance. That way you get nice clean mm -hmm. edges. I'm just gonna put this up here. And we're ready to go. Oh, wow. Yeah, immediately you can see the metallics yes. pop up. Like the color is gorgeous, but this just makes it pop. Yeah, and you're right, those metallics are absolutely like singing. 
So we'll spread around first, mm -hmm. see what we're working with here. So I noticed like as the acrylic dries, it gets quite matte. Yes. Right? So the resin is so nice to finish it off with and it, just yeah. to bring that gloss back. It almost makes it look like it's wet paint. Yes. For sure. Just like in when we first finished the last sunflower, it's pretty much the kind of look it's going to have, wet paint. What a difference with that metallic there. Mm -hmm. And you'll Gorgeous. really be able to see all of the iridescent and metallics that are in the white mm -hmm. negative space with the resin. It'll really pull out all of that sparkle. Wow, you can really see the difference in the black here mm -hmm. with the resin on top. It's just so saturated and deep. And Art Resin has such a nice consistency for this. You can really just nudge it yeah. to the edge. You can really make it move the way you want to move. Mm -hmm. So now I will go in and just kind of try to get it to the edges. Yep, so you can use your glove finger if you want. You can use like a little spatula or yeah. um, a little takeout knife. A plastic takeout knife works yep. really well. So I get it as close to the edges as I can. But again, like I said, if, it, if it's not perfect, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So once um, this cures till it's dry to the touch, so usually about the 24 hour mark, mm -hmm. or even a little bit before that, you can pull the tape off. Yes. Before the resin is fully cured. Yeah, I would definitely suggest that. It's a mm -hmm. lot easier mm -hmm. to take it off, plus you don't run the risk of pulling a chunk of the resin off once it's fully hardened. Yes. If it peels up over your painting, that could be a problem as well. Yeah. And sometimes when the resin like fully cures, the tape will just rip. Yes. And it's really and then hard it's, to get then it off. And it's stuck in there. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I loved most about Art Resin is the fact that it levels on its own and mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about all of the wobbliness from my fingers or the, the scraper. I can hit it with the torch and it will all sit down exactly where it's supposed to. Yeah, exactly. And it's got a nice long working time as well. It's about 40 minutes working time, so. Yeah, so you definitely have time to get it where you want it. Um, you just want to make sure that your surface is level and then it'll stay where you've put it. So I'm pretty sure we've got all there. Yeah, it looks like it. Do you want to get the torch for yes, you? Yes, please. Okay. I like to hold the torch on an angle that way and also kind of look at the piece in the light mm -hmm. so you can watch the air bubbles popping and you can see if you've missed any other yes. areas where they might be hiding out. Wow, that looks absolutely perfect. Okay, so I'm going to turn the torch off now and I'm going to kind of give it a look see if there's any dust or hair or I bubbles. see a little bit of dust right there. Okay. So it's Got really handy to keep some toothpicks close by. <laughs> toothpicks are like the secret super tool. That's fluid right. Art. <laughs> okay, I'm getting out all the last little pieces of dust. It looks absolutely perfect. Thank you. I love it. Thank you so much. Now once the resin dries, about 48 hours, it'll be ready for the wall. Amazing. All right, so she'll put this away, and then are we ready to move on to the next project? We are ready to move on. <laughs> okay, Christine, so what are we gonna work on next? Uh, so now we're going to do what I like to call a resin dutch, uh, where we're gonna use the art resin as our medium, and we're going to use acrylic paint to tint it, mm -hmm. and then that way, you cut the dry time down and it could be up on your wall in 24 hours and fully cured within 72 hours. Perfect, so it's like a two in one. Exactly. Like we're getting both done in one step. Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. So should we start with our resin? Yep, so I'm just gonna mix up the resin and a little bit extra for the colors and then we'll get started. So normally you would need 11 ounces for a panel this size, but you're gonna add a couple of extra ounces just to play with, yes. right? Yes, I'm, I'm gonna do 13 ounces to give me at least one ounce of each color extra. All right, so now that I have the resin fully mixed, I'm going to separate it into the three cups for mm -hmm. the colors, and then we'll get mixing our colors. Great. So you're doing four colors, right? White plus three? Yes, so white will be the base, mm -hmm. um, plus three colors. And I'll add a, literally like one little squirt of the paint mm -hmm. to the resin, um, and that will give me the color and the opacity that I'm looking for. 
So the general rule of thumb, no matter what colorant you're using, is 6%. Yes. Right? So one of these cups, it's one ounce, one fluid ounce, yep. which is around 30 mil. So you're looking at like two mil or so yes. of colorant. Not very much though. Not a, not a lot at all. And it's really important when you're picking um, paint colors that you pick colors that blend really nicely together, right? Because yes. you don't want them to become muddy once they meet. Right. When you get colors that don't work well together, it pretty much will always make brown. Right. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the color wheel is a good way to kind of check your colors, mm -hmm. see if they'll work together. So if you were gonna do like a, a black base coat or blue or whatever, would you paint your um, panel the same color? Yeah, just for so that extra... yes, whatever color you're planning on doing as your base um, to paint the panel or canvas beforehand will always come in handy with the resin pour. That way you're not missing any spots, you won't have any blank spaces and nothing's showing underneath. Right, good tip. So now we'll go in and tint the rest of the white. And again, even for this amount of resin, it's still not a lot. I did three squirts there. Well, it's always best to start with less because yes. you can't take it away, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> always much. start with less. It's yeah. easy to add. It's not easy to take away, right? Mm -hmm. So it's easy to do it on a wooden stick, but if, you, if you're trying to look to see of the opacity, if you look at your stick, you, you can't really see it mm -hmm. behind the resin. Um, with a tint, you would be able to see the wood stick. Right, gotcha. Underneath the color. Okay, and I think that looks pretty good. Great. So we have our white resin, we have our colored resin, and now it's time to do the Dutch pour. So the same thing as the sunflower, we'll pour this on, we'll spread it out across the whole canvas, mm -hmm. and then we'll lay the colors out. Okay, so now we're gonna pour our base and get started. I'm so excited to watch this. And typically, like how many colors would you use? Do you usually stick to your base coat plus like three? Or? Um, for a regular Dutch pour, I usually like to stick with like three or four, mm -hmm. but you can use as many as you want. As long as you're using the right colors like we talked about before, you shouldn't have any issues with muddying. Um, but you just want to go slow. I find the more colors you use, the slower you want to go to make sure that you're not causing any kind of crazy grays or browns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will torch it quickly just to get some of these bubbles out. Okay. And then we will lay the colors down. So now we'll add our colors. I'm gonna start with the pink. I'm gonna put the metallic right in the middle, hopefully create some cells, and the blue we'll put on top, and then that way we'll get a nice dark and light contrast. Nice. Here we go. I kind of like to give it a little bit of a S zigzag pattern. Mm -hmm. Kind of get some negative white space in there. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, it's nice to give it a little shape though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of flow for the flow. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So now I'm gonna kind of go right over top, but I'm also gonna zigzag into the white as well so that you'll get just pink, just gold, just blue in some spots, hopefully. It does. And now we'll take the blue right over top. Hopefully that'll give us some nice cells peeking through underneath as well. like a regular Dutch pour, you're gonna try to save some base so that you can flood a little bit around. With art resin, it does tend to level out right away, so it's a little bit different than the paint, but it still works the same way. So this is just gonna give you a little something to push, right? Yes. With the, yeah. with the hair dryer. Okay, and then one last torch, and we're ready to start.
Gold is a power player. Any gold, any gold will always try to take over. Right, steal the show, yeah. right? Yeah, look at all the cells starting, that's so cool. <laughs> but the hair dryer is really gonna make the magic yes. happen, right? So now this is where the magic starts. Okay, here we go. All right, thank you. Yeah, with the resin it is a little bit lighter, but still just as pretty. Oh wow, so pretty. <laughs> I love it. I'm glad we went with blue. Purple can be tricky to work with. Mm -hmm. And again, you're on cool, right? You're on a cool setting yeah. for the hair dryer? Yeah. Yep. Wow, that is so cool. Just like that. Wow. That is amazing. Thank you. It looks gorgeous. Thank you. And as the resin kind of settles and self-levels and everything, it's still going to change a little bit, right? Yeah. So one major difference between the resin and just the acrylic paint, uh, with the paint you notice the cells popped up immediately. Uh, with the resin, it does take a little bit more time to kind of develop. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, we're getting yes. some really nice little tiny cells yes. up here as well. Yeah. So it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. We've got the color where we wanted it and it's light where we wanted it. So yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, the cells are happening everywhere. It's mm -hmm. so cool to see it like evolve. Yes, yeah. yeah. And uh, the more you leave it, the better it develops. So mm -hmm. try not to, with the resin, you, you don't want to mess around with it too much after. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to overwork it, right? Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. Great, so now um, do we need to give it a final torch? Yeah, so I'm gonna torch it one more time, mm -hmm. get rid of any air bubbles that are left over and then we put it away to dry. Amazing. So I see a couple little death spots here, so I'm just gonna hand you a toothpick. Perfect, yeah, you definitely want to kind of move around, look at your piece in different lighting, uh, because standing straight on, I can't see that piece of dust, mm -hmm. but when I bend down, I can definitely yeah. see it, and more, that, that's for sure. Which, again, it's inevitable, it's in the air, right? Yes, so. for sure. That's why it's so important to protect it while it cures. Yep, and always one. have right the uh, magic toothpick tool. It's a secret weapon. It is, mm -hmm. it really is. Christine, this is like incredible. From the time that you finished um, blow drying it to what has happened now, like it is just evolving like right it, before it our really eyes. It really is growing into yeah. something completely different, but it's, it's still very, very pretty. Amazing. I'm glad you liked it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Great, so we will put this away and uh, let it cure. Yep. And we'll be back tomorrow to reveal the two pieces. Perfect. See you tomorrow. All right, we are back and the piece has cured. And Christine, it is absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Thank you. I love it. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Like all of these cells are just like amazing. Yeah, some of my favorite parts are like where the iridescent yellow is popping through mm -hmm. the primary yellow, so it's almost like you can't even see them until you're looking at them in a certain certain light. Yeah, and uh, that, like, you use sort of half metallics and half non-metallic. Right, acrylic yeah. Acrylic paint, and it really, like, makes such a difference. It just glows. Yeah, so when you line them up kind of like a metallic flat, metallic flat, they kind of fold on top of each other, mm -hmm. and that's where you get the cells. Yeah, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Then of course the resin mm -hmm. just makes it pop. Like the colors are so vibrant now. Yeah, so when a piece is dry and it's been cured for about three weeks, it will look pretty matte. Mm -hmm. Even um, with the gold and the shimmery metallics and whatnot, you'll, you still won't really see the true shine. But when you add the resin, it really brings it right back to life. Absolutely. Okay, so our second piece has cured overnight and now it is ready to reveal and it is beautiful, Christine. Thank you. I love it. It's different from the first one, but it is equally as beautiful. Yes. And you've got so many cool um, areas with the cells happening. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, with the acrylic mixed in with the resin, mm -hmm. it's definitely a softer piece. 
but yeah, definitely still equally as pretty. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And Christine, one thing that really stood out to me yesterday watching you work was how many variables there are when you're creating this type of artwork. Yes, uh, what kind of paint you use, the order of the paint. Yeah, definitely. So even just keeping with the same colors and switching the order, like you said, uh, if I would have put the pink on top, it would be a predominantly pink piece mm -hmm. with a little bit of blue in the background. So yeah, you don't even have to change your colors to get a different result. All you have to do is switch the order. That's so cool. It's exciting because you can create so many different results. You know? Exactly, definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming into the studio to teach us not <laughs> just one, but two different ways of using resin with Dutch pours. Oh, I learned so much from you. It was so great to have you here. <laughs> thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I, I'm glad to come out and teach and learn myself. So thank you for having me. Amazing. <laughs> well, if you have any questions for Christine, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.